Hey, good morning, Robert Medlin here. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of confusion about faith. You know, everybody wants to be a person of faith, and and uh, without faith, we can't please God. So we want to have a we want to we want to have faith, and so um, uh, many times our faith gets derailed because we misunderstand what faith is, and so uh, because there's so many scriptures that tell us that if we if we say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and whatever mountain in your life, if you say to this mountain, be removed, cast into the sea, you don't doubt in your heart, but you believe that those things you say are going to come to pass. You're going to have what you say. Well, that's a phenomenal promise about moving mountains. And Jesus talked about moving mountains all the time. He said, if, he said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing would be impossible for you. So Jesus said that, that faith is... Uh, something that 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 was tangible. It's tangible that mountains move. That 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 you can you can just feel it, and you know it. You know it's going to happen. Well, so many times we just get in the mode where where we just believe that that well I'll believe it when I see it, and well I've prayed that so many times and I just don't you know I haven't seen it yet. You know I've been praying for that for for four or five months. I've been praying for that for two or three years. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jesus said that we're going to have to develop our faith before the end times because uh, faith is going to be lacking because there's going to be overwhelming circumstances and stuff that that will just take you under if you're not walking by faith. You know, if you're just looking at the natural circumstances, then then you'll sink. You know, like Peter. You know, when when uh, he was walking on water and and Jesus told him that he could come and walk on water, and Peter's walking on water. Then all of a sudden he he looks at the natural circumstances and he said, Wait a minute, I can't do this. And he started sinking. And then Jesus had to rescue him, put him in the boat. And then uh you know, Jesus just said, You know, what, what where's your faith, Peter? What's what's going on here? So not criticizing him, just tell him to encourage him to take a look at your faith. You know, your faith has to be in what I said. And not what you see, not what you feel. It's what Jesus said. It's his promises. All the promises of God are yes in Christ. And so Jesus is the word of God. And he spoke all those promises into existence for us. And so we can have every one of those promises. Every one of them uh, belong to us. And so we can just find a promise that we need and, and just stand on that promise and believe for something. Uh, and Jesus said that we're going to have it if we believe, if we if we don't give up. <laughs> so I just want to encourage you that, that many times you pray and, and things just seem like they get worse instead of getting better. You know, oh, uh, you know, I'm not going to pray anymore because it gets worse and gets worse when I pray. No, you can't, you can't think like a natural person. You've got to think like a spiritual person. A spiritual person looks at things that are not seen. Faith is being sure of things that we don't see. Faith is being sure of things we don't see. So we're not living by what we see. We're not living by what we've experienced. Well, I haven't experienced that. So <laughs> well, the fact that you haven't experienced it or you haven't realized that you've experienced it doesn't nullify the Word of God. And so the worst place you can get in is just not believing and not having faith that Jesus is going to answer his prayers, not going to answer your prayers, not going to fulfill his promises for you. Then you're just left like a, you know, you're a Christian, you believe in Jesus, but but as far as your walk in this daily life, we've got to live by faith in his promises. And if you can't do that, then you're just like a person that's not a that's an unbeliever. As far as the natural circumstances of life, you have eternal life, you're going to heaven. But but unbelievers have to rely on natural circumstances, what they can see. You know, if they if the weather's going to be bad, that's that's what they see. And so, uh, if there's going to be a famine, that's what they see. If there's going to be a shortage, that's what they see. Because they heard it, because they saw it on the news, they've given more credibility to the news uh, than to what Jesus said. You know, Jesus, we're supposed to turn things around with our prayers. We're supposed to take impossible situations and turn them around with our prayers and our faith. So I just want to encourage you today not to get discouraged because Jesus said, when I come, will I find faith on the earth? There's going to be a real stress and attack on our faith. Uh, in these last days. And so he wants you to develop your faith so you're not confused and overwhelmed by 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 things. You know, he, you he wants you want him to find faith in you when he comes. And so you know in the last days there, there may be 
many hardships, maybe hard to get food, but Jesus is going to, Jesus, there were many times when it was hard to get food. Jesus just multiplied the food and, and fed multitudes of people by just multiplying the food. So we live in the supernatural. We live in the realm of, of the impossible. You know, faith is being sure of what we hope for, being certain of we do certain about what we don't see. Faith is being certain about what you don't see. <laughs> I'm sure about that because I. Why? Because you don't see it, do you? No, I don't see it. But the, the Word of God says it, so I'm sure about it. I'm more sure about that than the things that I see. So that's what the Lord wants us to get. Our uh, He wants us to have a happy, fulfilled, joyful life. And the only way we're going to be able to do it in these times is we're going to have to be walking by faith. Because when we walk by faith, we're full of joy. Jesus was full of joy more than any of his companions. Jesus wasn't somber and, and running around. <laughs> Jesus was laughing because the devil was getting defeated everywhere. and Demons were coming out of people and people were receiving eternal life. Jesus was just full of joy. People were getting healed. Lame people were walking. Blind people were seeing. Jesus was just full of joy. Joy. And so he was in, he wasn't, his circumstances weren't something you look at and say, oh, you know, look at the circumstances. You know, uh, the, the, the religious leaders of the day are trying to kill you. You know, they're, they're trying to do, plot to kill you. Uh, the, the leader of the Roman government, he's, he's taking sides with them. And Rome is against you and and you know the people are wanting to stone you and it just takes a, just a one little word and people are wanting to stone you you know that's what Jesus lived in those circumstances where people were trying to kill him all the time and so but he was full of joy so we want to be full of joy you know things are, are pretty easy for us here in the, in our country right now but but uh, for other people in other parts of the world things are hard right now and uh, they're going to get difficult for everybody so we just have to, what's our job? Our job is to pray that these difficult circumstances will be abated, that the storm that's coming, whether it be stopped, that the angels will be sent and stop that storm and cause it to veer off where it doesn't cause any damage to anybody. So our job is to be praying with faith in the middle of all the circumstances that are going on in life around us and in the world, not to get overwhelmed by it. Jesus doesn't want you overwhelmed by what you see because if you're walking by what you see you can get overwhelmed he wants you to be full of faith by what he said just think about what he said that's what peter when jesus said when peter said lord if, if that's you tell me to come walking on the water and and so peter gets out of the boat and starts walking on the water he's got his eyes on jesus all of a sudden he hears a, a news report that there's a storm he hears some one of his friends say that that the winds and the waves are high <laughs> and so he starts looking and he starts looking around and he says, yeah, the wind, the waves are high. Yeah, there is a storm. The winds are blowing. You know, I'm going to sink. And so Jesus gets, or Peter gets his eyes off of Jesus and he starts to sink. That's the way it happens. Is, is you, he, he gets diverted. We get diverted from what Jesus said. Get diverted from what Jesus is telling us through his word and we get sidelined. And then once we're in the realm of the world, uh, we're just like everybody else is. We're just uh, listening for the next news report, hoping something good's going to happen, you know. So uh, uh, we just we can't get caught up in that. There's no joy in that. Jesus wants to be full. Of, wants us to be full of joy. He talked about that that things are going to, you know, don't be don't be shocked when 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 you have problems in your family. He said people in your family are going to turn turn against you, and and don't be shocked by that. Jesus said it was going to happen. What do we do? We pray for them. Lord, have mercy on them. Lord, thank you for forgiving them. Thank you, Lord, for revealing yourself to them. And, uh, you know, if you were living in Israel right now and you were a Jew and you accepted Jesus, then the chances are very high that, that you would be ostracized from society. Your family would totally disown you. And the Jews are very strong in family and communion with family. And so uh, many of the Jews that accept Jesus, they just, they're disowned by their family. And so a lot of people, a lot of Jews that get saved, they just don't tell anybody. They're saved, they believe in Jesus, but I'm not gonna tell anybody, they're gonna, they're gonna throw me out of the family. <laughs> and it was the same in Jesus' day, that uh, the people were believing in him, the, the Pharisees and people like that were believing in him, but they were afraid to tell anybody because they were afraid he'd get thrown out of the synagogue <laughs> 
and that meant financial loss and all that. So uh, anyway, the Lord wants us to to get used to walking by faith, get used to walking by by things you don't see, get used to walking by faith in what Jesus said, not not faith in what the things are going on in the world. The things the things we see in the world, they're just meant for us to pray that that Jesus' kingdom would come to those situations. That, that his kingdom would come, his will would be done in those situations. When people turn against you, we're not to say, oh, well, just forget those guys. No, we, we want faith works by love. No, Lord, turn those people's hearts to you. I forgive them. Lord, and I know if I forgive them, you forgive them. So they're forgiven. I don't hold anything against them. I just break the power of the devil over that situation, over their minds. They're blinding their minds. I break the power of the devil if they're off of them so they can see clearly that and, and, and see you, Lord, and get their eyes on you. And if I've done anything offensive, Lord, I pray that you'd show me so I could apologize for it, so I could, can help take that off of them. So we're walking by faith and not by sight. We're Christians. We walk by faith and not by sight. People look at you and say, you're nuts. Christians will look at you and say, you're nuts. You're nuts for what you're, you know, what you're saying. You're nuts for saying everything's fine. You're nuts for saying that, that God is going to, you know, you're, you don't have any food in the refrigerator and you're, you're saying that God's going to provide everything for you. You're nuts! <laughs> so that's the way the, the world responds and we don't want to be like the world and respond just like the world does. And when we see a person of faith, we need to say, yes, Lord, fulfill their prayers, Lord. We don't get offended at somebody that's having faith. We just say, yes, Lord, bless them. Yes, Lord, deliver them. Yes, Lord, answer every single prayer they're uttering with their mouth and their heart, Lord. That's our that's our job. We don't get offended of people because people you can get offended by people with faith. You know you'll get offended by them because they run around and they're limping and they say, "Well, I'm healed by his stripes. I'm healed." You can get offended by that. You know they got a big thing on their face or whatever, and 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 they're saying, "By his stripes, I'm healed. I'm healed. Jesus has healed me. Glory to God." And you think they were nuts, you know. No, you don't think they're nuts. You say, glory to God, Lord, listen to their faith, Lord Jesus. Thank you for fulfilling their prayer that they have prayed, that they're believing that you have fulfilled. Thank you for releasing your power from heaven and causing it to pass, to come to pass. That's the way we respond to the things of faith and people of faith. We're faith people. So uh, Jesus said, you know, when I come, I'll find faith on the earth. So uh, <clears throat> I want to in encourage you to, to get your eyes on the promises of God, you gotta, you've got to get some promises that you're having for yourself. You've got to get familiar with the promises, familiar with the Word of God, so you, so you know that that Word of God, that promise of God, takes precedence over everything else that's going on in your mind and, and that you see in the world. You know, the, the Word that's in your heart takes precedence. You've got to get that Word in your heart. You've got to look at the Word. You've got to meditate on the Word. You've got to confess the Word. Let that word take place and take precedence, take root in your heart. And that's what we live by, is we live by faith and not by sight. <laughs> so uh, I want to encourage you about that. Uh, and I, the Lord bless you. I want you to, I bless you. I know that you're listening to these videos that, that, that uh, you're, you want to be encouraged. Let this video encourage you that that you're not ruled by your circumstances. You're ruled by what Jesus says about you. He loves you. You're his kid. He's going to provide for you. He's going to take care of, care of you. He's going to answer your prayers. You know, that's what you're ruled by. You're a child of God. You, I want to encourage you with that, that he's going to answer those prayers, that the things you see in the natural, those are just things for you to laugh at and say, no, no, that's not, that's not the way it is. The way it is is Jesus has intervened and answered my prayer, and I am healed by his stripes. I am healed. God is meeting all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Beloved, I, I, believe, I, I want you to prosper and be in health. Even, even as your soul is prospering, my soul is prospering, and he's prospering me financially, and I'm in health. Glory to God, I'm living by faith in the promises of God. All those promises in the Bible are mine. I'm living by faith in the promises, not by what I see and what I feel. And I just want to encourage you to, to begin to think that way, to begin to act that way, to begin to talk that way. And see if you can't offend somebody with your faith. <laughs> Not to offend them, to hurt them, but to cause them to wake up to say, hey, listen, Jesus said if we believe, we'd have what we say, even if we don't see it. He believed that if we believe, we're going to have what we say, what, we, what we're believing for, what we prayed for. Gives you an opportunity to encourage people. 
So uh, not to offend people, to, but to encourage them. So uh, I just pray that <clears throat> Jesus will, will strengthen you in your faith, encourage you in your faith, give you signs and dreams and visions to encourage you in your faith and, and let you see the fruit of your faith and see those those prayers come to pass that you prayed sometimes years and years ago that those those prayers would start coming to pass in your life that you would be able to see it and be filled with joy run around worshiping the Lord and thanking him for what he's done and telling other people what he's done <laughs> well God bless you God bless you have a wonderful day